All right, let's talk about uh, that leaked audio. Former President Barack Obama talking about the Trump White House's response to the coronavirus has caught a lot of people's attention. And a lot of people are wondering about the timing of all this, coming about the same time as the DOJ's decision to drop the charges against Michael Flynn. President Obama tweeting a lot about Obamagate over the weekend, adding Watergate will look like a parking ticket in comparison. Now, in that recording, which was obtained by Yahoo News, you can clearly hear the former president talking about the DOJ's decision to drop the charges against Flynn. Here is former President Obama. There is no precedent that anybody can find for uh, someone who's been charged with perjury just getting off scot-free. That's the kind of stuff where you, you begin to uh, get worried that basic, not just institutional norms, but uh, our basic understanding of, of rule of law is at risk. All right, let's welcome in Republican Congressman Guy Reschenthaler to talk more about this. He's a member of the House Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committee. He's also an Iraq War veteran, and he serves Pennsylvania's 14th District, which is just south of Pittsburgh. Congressman, great to have you back with us. John, thanks for having me on. All right, what was your initial reaction when you heard this recording of President Obama? Well, to me, it seems like President Obama is deflecting. And I think that the fact that Michael Flynn was, by all means, exonerated when charges were dropped, we now have to look at what President Obama knew and what Vice President Biden knew and when they knew it when it comes to Flynn. Did they know that the FBI was planning to go after Flynn in the early days of the Trump administration? And why wasn't Loretta Lynch uh, dowed into this? She said on uh, an interview that she was not aware of the investigation that was taking, play taking place. So how did all this happen at the top echelons of the FBI, yet Loretta Lynch did not know about it. And again, what did President Obama know and Biden know and when did they know it? That's going to be very telling. And how far back are we willing to go? I mean, we, we can anticipate uh, pretty serious congressional investigations. What would you like an investigation in the House to look like on this? Well, I'd like to take a look back at at least one year leading up to the 2016 election because it was the top echelon of the FBI that started to spy on the Trump organization and the Trump campaign. I want to see what they did uh, in those early days uh, to set up that investigation, why defensive briefings were not given to President Trump and those on his campaign team, which is the standard, by the way, when you're doing these investigations. And again, I want to know what President Obama and Vice President Biden knew and when they knew it. So I'm going to, I'm going to eagerly await the Durham report because I think that's going to be very telling. Yeah, it would be nice if uh, there were regular campaign stops where we could ask Joe Biden about this while he was out on the campaign trail. We'll have to wait for someone to ask the former vice president about what he knew. Let's also talk about China. I know you're on the House's China Task Force. China and the WHO are denying reports that President Xi persuaded the World Health Organization to delay issuing a global warning about the coronavirus. This comes as the New York Times says U.S. intelligence officials believe China is trying to steal valuable intellectual property and public health data through illicit means related to vaccines, treatments, and testings. You know, the question is, Congressman, what is China going to do to pay for all this? What's the latest you're hearing? Well, how China is going to pay for this in the short term is that a lot of the supply chains, not only the United States, but other nations are moving out of China. In the United States in particular, we know that we're very vulnerable to the fact that so much PPE and so many pharmaceuticals are made in China. So it's time to bring those supply chains back to the United States and start to manufacture right here domestically, and that's going to hurt China. Another thing that we can do is we can look at increasing tariffs on China, which will... Um, in essence, have them pay some money to the United States, although it's indirectly. But right. I really want to see an international body investigate the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, and the World Health Organization. I've called for that in a resolution. Nancy Pelosi has failed to run that resolution. But I want to see uh, the coordination and the steps that World Health Organization took mm -hmm. with the Chinese Communist Party, and how they went out of their way to uh, not be transparent to keep the rest of the world in, in darkness during the early days of this virus and how they worked hand in glove to cover up this disease. Well, I hope you'll get be, be, be patient, I guess, because anything is going to have to get in line behind voting by mail when it comes to Nancy Pelosi and the next thing Congress is going to do, apparently. Congressman, great to see you as always. We'll check in with you on Thanks, that John. in the near future. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.